What is up, you beauties? Welcome back. We are live. We are here talking to Stinky Duck, which is one of my favorite names uh, I've ever seen in a Discord or anything like that. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and we have a lot to talk about today, guys. We are talking about Soulcraft. Uh, this is episode four for Soulcraft, 13 for NFC, non fungible, or NF, non fungible cast NFC, uh, which is our new name for that. Uh, Stinky Duck, I want to talk to you. I want to. Uh, we got WT here. He's the partner in crime. He's always doing his thing. He's got that beautiful uh, caterpillar going on his face, getting a little thicker. It's going to be a butterfly soon. And uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Stinky Duck, I want to know about you. Tell us all about you, your background, your involvement with Soulcraft, everything. Let's hear it. And how you got the name Stinky Duck, man? I want to know. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Uh, so my real name's Steve. Uh, I am a, a project manager IRL, estimator, uh, director of marketing for a contracting company. Uh, is, so that's what I've been doing for the last few years, uh, or 10 years actually. Um, I started getting into NFTs uh, probably about three years ago now, and uh, I started out as a hobby. I think everybody kind of went down the same track. You get into crypto, and then you get into NFTs, and you just kind of you go head first and you just plummet right into it. So yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what happened to me. And uh, you know, I just started uh, interconnecting, and, and I found that you know it's very, very different NFTs as related to trading crypto or even stocks or, or what have you. Uh, it's you're more of a community member now. You know, you're you're not a you're not a one man wolf pack anymore. So uh, I like that aspect, and it really just started to uh, to grow from there. Um, you know, it, it wasn't too long before I realized that this is really what I want to do. And, and, and I just love doing it. And, and so I wanted to follow that passion. Um, I started connecting and just helping out different communities. And I found that, you know, the friendships that I was building up in that time was, was something invaluable to me. Mm -hmm. And so that was my main focus really for a long time. I was just having fun and, 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 uh, making friends. Yeah. And then, sorry, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was just saying, it's funny you say that because that's how WT and, and I met. We met through uh, NFTs and community. That's what it's about. And there's many other people in here that that uh, that have that will watch this podcast that, you know, become close and friends and it's through this. And you don't get that through, you know, you know, uh, investing in whatever, you know, uh, a Bitcoin or an Ethereum. You don't get that same bond like you do in a community like this. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem, man. You're, you're absolutely right. So I just, I just love that aspect of it. And so when I really started getting involved was, uh, I guess the meerkats, uh, when they kind of came out and I started helping out with their discord, uh, the northerly Northern gang is, uh, you know, I, I got a lot of friends in that group and, and from there it just kind of snowballed. I started helping out, you know, all the different collections that I had, I started, you know, minting like crazy. And I was just, you know, I found a couple of communities that I really, really loved and helped and wanted to be part of their spaces. And in one of those Twitter spaces, I met uh, John uh, from Parlay, the founder of Parlay and the Soul Bouncers. And so he started kind of talking to me about what, what his struggle was. And at the time, he was struggling to, believe it or not, mint out at 0 0.07 uh, for the Parlay NFT, which, uh, I mean, as we know now, have peaked at, I think it was 55 was the peak. They're sitting around 10 Soul Floor right now. So, wow. I mean, he was struggling and he, he had a hard time interconnecting. And so... I offered to to try to help and and to connect them to some of the OG communities and in and the uh, it's almost like an underground and you guys know it yeah. it's like you know once you yep. start connecting into this it's it's unreal like like anything you know what I mean the yeah. networking we've talked about uh, that it's almost like a, sorry we, we've talked yeah. about that WT and I've talked like networking is huge in this like you meet this person from this community then they introduce you there and you get become friends over here and then it it drags over to here and it everything connects everything just connects and yeah no that's huge networking is massive and uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah sorry go on keep going I'm sorry. <laughs> You have to apologize. I'm I'm outside and the wind's kind of picking up, so I don't know if you guys can <laughs> pick up on the wind or whatever. But uh, no, you're I good. Just, I love being outside, so I can. Well, I well, I I will be outside. <laughs> but anyway, back to John. Yeah, he. Uh, I, I just offered to help him out and connect him. You know, it wasn't really in anything official. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to see the guy succeed. I loved his story. I loved his uh, the origin and everything of where he came from and how he's a war vet and you know. He got injured. We shared, uh, you know, some pretty similar injury stories. Um, and I just, I just had a connection with him, you know? And so I started helping him and, and there wasn't anything really designated or, or assigned or anything like that. I just got involved. And, mm -hmm. and from there, it just snowballed so quickly. And, you know, we, we, 
we, we went from one, uh, you know, the parlay to the soul bouncers. We minted out in like 30 seconds. Um, the community wow. blew up to like 10 K at one point. Uh, wow. it just, it went crazy. And, uh, you know, from there I started getting consult, uh, people asking me to consult for their projects, uh, advise for them, connect them to, you know, certain individuals. Um, and I, I just, from there, I, I turned it into a job. And, and, uh, so that's what I've been doing. It's, um, it's really come a long way though. And, and, you know, it, it kind of led me up to the soul craft thing as well. But, um, recently parlay, we've, la we've launched this incubator and I've been leading it. And so one of my main, my main roles in that is to actually deep dive into these new NFT collections and to really investigate them and kind of do our own in-house audit on them, uh, which allows me to really, really get, uh, you know, basically all the information on those collections beforehand. And with my experience, it really gives me, you know, the footing to, to find those good collections. So that's kind of where we're at right yeah. now. That's one thing I always say is, is you can't buy experience experience. Like you, it doesn't matter. You cannot buy. And like you're saying, you have all this experience and all these other projects and doing this stuff. And, and that's the thing is you, you're going to, you're going to learn from everything. If it's good or bad, you know, you're going to learn from the good things. You're going to learn from mistakes and it's going to make you a better, you know, whatever it is going forward. So yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely awesome. Uh, what a story, man. You're a man of many talents. That's for sure. A man of many talents and uh, very, very impressive uh, resume for sure. Um, give me one sec here. WT, how are you? I see your, your caterpillar, almost a butterfly. What's going on with it? And by the way, I got to say, Stinky Duck, your beard is phenomenal. You have a, a, a oh, wonderful yeah. beard, my man. Uh, I can't grow one can like you? that. <laughs> but, yeah, can you tell uh, me the Scandinavian in there? I got a bit of Viking in me. So. Yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah. I love it. Mine's getting man. gray, man. Mine's getting a little gray. You know, it's, uh, listen, I'm a little sensitive. It was my birthday the other day. Uh, you know, I'm getting closer to 40 now. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a little sensitive, man. No, but it's a beautiful thing. Uh, WT, uh, how have you been, buddy? What's new and exciting? Talk to me. Uh, and uh, what's going on? And beautiful good, man, mustache. good. I've got green in the background today. Uh, I just felt like green because I felt like there's just money everywhere to be made. So I'm going <laughs> green today in the background. The announcement last night from Soulcraft, the white paper listing today, mm -hmm. lots of information out there. Very, very bullish stuff. Uh, personally, like I'm, you got me zoned in right now. You, you got me with the beard right off the bat. <laughs> and then you come in with this epic like background origin story. And I'm like, oh man, this is cool. And uh, yeah, I, I really like what you said about networking. Uh, one of the biggest things I've learned in 2021 was about networking. I learned it from Maddie DCL blogger. He's, he's kind of big on the Ethereum network. He, he's got this company called Medikey. I'm not going to go into that. But what I learned from him was about networking and everything that you just said, it's it just it's perfect. And the power of networking is what drives the space, in my opinion. And we just had a conversation late last night on a Twitter space. And a lot of people are starting to get impatient that these games aren't readily available and they're not going to be as good a quality as AAA. And these AAA companies are going to come eventually and give us the products that we want. And I'm like, you don't understand. You, you really don't want that. You want this organic space of networking to happen because if and when they do come in, they're probably going to follow the same lead as what Facebook is doing and only give you a pittance right. of what your value is in your NFT. And that's what this space is about, self-ownership and this underground networking and making friends. And it's ours. It's mm -hmm. ours. And if we give that to them, we lose that organic networking. And I absolutely love what you just said. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and speaking of, of all that, uh, there was recent news about Savannah. Um, can you explain what Savannah is to us? It's like a metaverse kind of thing and Soulcraft is involved in it now, right? So what's, what's Soulcraft's yeah. involvement with it? What does that mean for us as players, investors? Uh, I know we can bring our dwarves in there and stuff. Can you explain what, uh, what that is for us? Yeah. So, okay. So Savannah is actually pretty exciting. Um, I, we partnered with them from parlay as well and so uh i'm friends with sago uh as well as mistress and a few other of the uh of the founders from uh, uh savannah basically what they're doing and if you can imagine uh pokemon back on like like the game boy style mm -hmm. pixelated Love you it. know 2d above above the world kind of looking and walking around as your little character well that's gonna that's basically savannah now if you own a dwarf and you go into savannah your pfp or your character will be a dwarf 
awesome. or, you know, whatever uh, partnered NFT you have in that collection. So there's a little bouncer running around in Savannah. There's, <laughs> you know, there's like a bunch of the OD little, like the, I think there's meerkats and, and basically every collection that you can imagine that's OG is got a little PFP in this world. So I just love what they're building. Uh, I think that it's going to be a whole social network and you're going to be able to run like uh, meetings and interact with people in there. I just think it's going to be really cool. So very cool. I was stoked about it when I learned about them. I'm a holder of Savannah as well, just full disclosure. Um, and I just love what they, they're, they're true builders, you know, and I, I seen that when I, when I started looking into that collection. So I just drew to it and I've done a few spaces with them and, and they're just really smart group. I think we'll have to start doing podcasts from here in the Savannah metaverse. You know, we'll all stand Ooh. there with our, with our dwarves mm -hmm. and uh, we could do our, uh, our podcast from there. That'd be cool. Uh, I think it's really, yeah. really neat, man. So I, I love that kind of stuff when things kind of uh, evolve. I, I loved it. When I saw that, I was like, yo, that's, that's, that's big news. I, I really, really enjoyed that. Now I want to talk about some things coming up in Soulcraft. We got the pig airdrop coming up. Uh, is there anything you can tell us about that? Uh, can you explain like the process, uh, the time frame, and what the viewers have to do? Like, is there anything we have to do on our end? Uh, the breeding aspect, break it down for us. Cause I know there's a few questions about, you know, the, the breeding, the pigs and all that stuff. This is the man stinky yeah. duck. Uh, first of all, before we get, I got, where's the name? Stink I love the name. Where's the name come from? Um, where does, where does stinky duck yeah. come from? Okay, so, so stinky duck, um, is actually two nicknames as a child. Um, both of them bothered. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so wow. Where's this going? Family, yeah. Yeah. My family used to call me uh stinky and ducky, uh, you know, in two different nicknames that I kind of acquired over the years. <laughs> and they always knew it kind of bothered me. And, uh, you know, as I grew and I realized, you know, you got to own those parts of yourself. You know what I mean? So amazing. I just made it my name to own it. Now I am stinky duck. So incredible. It's just kind of where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> fun, fun fact, fun story. My, my brothers and sisters used to call me boobs. That's what they called me a whole life. Bo I didn't have boobs, but they called me boobs. That was my nickname. My name is Bruno. They called me boobs. I can't bring that to the NFT space. You know, I can't really bring that like, yo, hey, what's up, man? It's boobs here. I can't, you know, at least you can use your nickname. You know, mine, mine had to die a long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, no, that's cool. I like that's a little tougher one to use uh, in today's day and age. Yeah, yeah. So I like I like your I like how you got that. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, let's bring up the pigs. I want to talk about the pigs uh, breeding, uh, how they're going to get airdropped, the time frame, all that stuff. Whatever you, you want to bring up, uh, let us know about it. Yeah. So uh, we're really excited about the pigs. So um, April twenty first, twenty second is when we're planning on it. And so basically, what you got to do, just make sure you got your dwarf staked. And so what is going to happen is as they're minting, they're going to actually automatically be airdropped to the associated uh, address to whatever uh, dwarf it's going to. So it's it's all automated. Uh, it'll be nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, awesome. I want to share a bit of alpha with you guys as well. Yeah. Uh, because it kind of ties in with the pigs as well as breeding. And so I know everybody's real stoked about the land parcels, right? We're coming out at the end of the month. We got the land parcel is going to be 2.5 sol. Uh, you have to have three dwarfs to get the whitelist, okay? Now, the interesting part about the land parcels that we haven't really gone into depth with is um, is the actual uh, feeding mechanism that we're going to have. So you're going to have to grow wheat, right, to, to, mm. to feed your pig to upgrade them. Well, the catch is only the landowners can grow the, the wheat. So in order to upgrade your pigs or level them up or breed them or whatever, you need to buy this wheat and you need oh, to buy it. From beautiful. Oh yeah. man. Ooh, beautiful. So, so what we're doing is we're tying everything together. Now we're creating a utility within a utility and we're, we're creating our ecosystem. The whole premise of this world, this game is to create a world where everything in it has a value, everything. So yeah. when you have a land, it's got a value. When you build a building on that land, that, that building is going to have a value. You know, you're going to be able to have a workshop on your land that you're going to be able to create items, armor, possibly even consumable products for your dwarfs wow. or your pigs. You wow. know, so like one of the ideas that our community came up with is they wanted more animals and we love it. Like we love the idea, you know, it, right. they don't always have to be pigs. So one of my personal ideas uh, is create a consumable item like a potion and transform your pig into a wolf or a dragon or you know whatever whatever these animals are so we do have a couple different ones that we're looking at depending on the race 
you're going to be able to transform your pet into different animals. I love that. See, and that's what we talk about is like the last podcast we did, the word of the day was utility. Like the, the amount of utility in this, in this game in Soulcraft, it just blows my mind. It's just, you, first of all, I got to say, you guys are incredible at what you do. You guys know what you're doing. The, you guys are building just an incredible game. There's so much utility. Like when I tell my friends, like, cause I, we've been bringing a lot, we got a lot of people to come in cause not to come in, but we just tell them like, yo, listen to this, pro- look at this. You got to listen to this. And they're like, this is incredible. Like how, how can you say no to it? The utility, everything. And there's, it's just keep getting bigger and bigger and growing and growing like this wheat thing i had no idea about that and that's huge so now that gives your land even more value than it already did because you know wt and i have been talking we say yo land is king that's what we want was the land we got a bunch of dwarves so we can get a bunch of land like that's the play and we didn't even know about the wheat so this is huge so what you're saying is you need the wheat to is it to breed the pigs or to maintain the pigs that is incredible that is absolutely and only the land and there's only 800 parcels right Right. So the, so there's going to be uh, the weed is to breed them and to level them up. We don't want to make it so that you're like your pig's going to die or something right, like right, that right. if you don't. You know, yeah. that, I don't think that would go over very well. But yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, but we do want to have utility for, you know, the pigs need to have something from the landowners. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Now, speaking so, the connection. So we had, that is all, actually, that is amazing. Um, WT, what do you want to add to that? That is amazing, man. Uh, with the land, the wheat and, uh, you know, the breeding and, and the utility. <clears throat> Talk to us. I'm not surprised. Uh, <clears throat> fertility, fertility. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, that's the theme. That's the theme that I've noticed. Uh, I don't know, two, three weeks ago was they just keep packing value into things over and over again. Uh, they've done it with the dwarves. Uh, they've done it with the pigs, with the breeding system, added to the the different variations of what you can make and the percentage of a chance to get a dragon, uh, a wolf, or a ram. Now they're doing with the land, and it's it's just a common theme from what I've been seeing so far. Absolutely incredible, man. I, I tell you, you guys are superstars, man. I, I love it. I love what I hear. Every time I talk to you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, every time I talk to you guys, I just get blown away more and more by just everything that you're adding. It's like just when you think they can't add anything else, it's like, oh, by the way, oh, yeah, there's wheat now on the land. And it's mm-hmm. like, what? Like, that's incredible. That's really good. Like, that is really, 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 really good to hear. Uh, what else can you tell us about the land? I know it's uh, it was the end of April, I believe, or something like that. There's a time frame <clears throat> with, with the land. Um, how is it going to work? So, can you explain more about that? Yeah. So, okay. So each land parcel, uh, it's going to be, uh, produced one of one. Okay. So the, the generation to these unique pieces, it's going to be, it's going to be right down to the density of forest to how much minerals are on the, that land parcel. It's going to be, uh, like the crystal density, uh, nothing will rival our land parcels. Um, like the, the terrain, uh, we're going to have uh, forest desert, uh, ice and fire in that order. Mm-hmm. uh for rarity um the like i said that the ability to construct we are going to have to start with uh workshops that you're going to be able to build on your land and so those workshops you're going to be able to put them to work and you're going to be able to create items now the really really cool about these items cool thing about these items is that we're going to eventually implement them into like their own nft so now incredible now not only is your dwarf an nft you know, maybe maybe we can figure out a way. Now, this is this is totally just theoretical at this stage. But, but what if there's a way to split the pig out from our current NFT and make it, it its own NFT? Right. You know what I mean? Like that's that's an idea. Um, but the items themselves, the weapons, they're all going to be their own NFTs, and they're going to be a product that you can earn and sell or trade to other people for real money, you know? So that's, right. that's where we're implementing this whole, like, so it's almost like Diablo three or like, you know, like world of Warcraft or, right. or, or any of these games where you're, you're grinding and collecting these armor sets, you're going to have value in that. And that's, and that's what we're trying to do. That's what I see in the metaverse. Like that's what, I, that's how I literally picture it. Like when you're playing a game, you get an item, you get a sword, you get a shield. That is your, that's how I picture. That's what this should be like. That's what this space should be about. You own it. And I love that. Uh, absolutely incredible, man. Again, I didn't know about the buildings and stuff on the land. That's, that's awesome, dude. Like again, more value. And, and, and I think to me, the land is very, very, very important. These Genesis dwarves are very, very, very important. Uh, we haven't even talked about the elves yet. Like there's elves coming up and, and like these dwarves, this is just the dwarf. Like there's so guys, I tell you, there's so much. I don't under, like, dude, I am so bullish on this, man. I, 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 I got to tell you because there's just so just in the dwarves, the land, there's elves coming up with owl pets. 
Uh, what can you? So here's the thing. There's not too much known about the about the elves, right? We don't know much about the female. We know the female elves. They look beautiful. And what can we? What 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 can you tell us about these elves? Let's hear some stuff like what, utility. If you could tell us okay. about utility, what can you tell us? Let's see what okay, you got. So okay, so we're still ironing out the exact utility of the of the elves. So I can't you know specify or verify whether it's going to be finalized. Mm -hmm. But one of my favorite ideas is that the elf will actually have healing abilities for your for your party. So you know you're gonna you, you think of it this way: where you play these uh, RPG games where you've got a group of people and each member has their own you know like role. thing that they bring to the, the to the party you know what i mean that's what i foresee this as so as we stack these new characters into the game you're going to want to acquire them to upgrade your 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 whole group so it's going to have like a you know like a, a group heal ability or or something of that nature that's right. what i see or maybe they can make bandages or something that can help heal your characters uh where you can create something with those specifics um but basically the intention is to have them still be able to mine solonite but at a lot lower rate because there's going to be more of them. Uh, we want to open up more uh, ability to have more community members come in. Uh, so that was one of the intentions with mm -hmm. the elves as well. And then obviously breeding ability, right? Because we're going to be able, and we've already voted on this too, is to have a uh, cross, uh, uh, cross class breeding. Cool. You know what I mean? I'm not sure exactly. I'm not sure what that will look like. <laughs> I mean, a dwarf elf. I mean, you know, <laughs> that is, yeah, dude, that is so, uh, awesome. Yeah, man, the sky, the, the way I see it, the sky's the limit, you know, like we, we've talked about where you land in this camp and, you know, the variations of what we can actually have in those camps themselves, a potion stand. We're going to have a beer hall where you can go in and socialize with people. So um, sick. We can build whatever we want. We're going to do, you know, a parlay table where you can, where, which cup is the stone under or something like that, you know, where you can bet your stolen night. Very or, cool. You know, it, the sky's the limit guys like if we come up with an idea then we can look at it and we can roll with it and that's what i like about our team the best is because you know if i come up with an idea i, I call up mal and i call up Kadaria, say hey what do you guys think about this like let's do it like the next day we have a poster about it we've got you know the devs already up to board we've got an artist already like we, we've already actively started it so we are the type of group if we have something we see in our sites, we're gonna we're gonna work at it, and it's gonna work for us. That's you know I mean? that's one thing. WT and I I've mentioned many times. Like, you guys don't mess around. It's like this is what we're gonna do. Boom, it's in play. Yep, let's go, and we're moving with. Like, you guys do not mess around. Uh, you're always adding more and more, which has been uh, absolutely incredible. I know WT is looking forward to those elves too. Uh, WT, what are we looking for with these elves, man? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I think we're gonna have to slap like an MC seventeen rating on this game, though, with all the breeding going on. I mean, <laughs> like breeding going on everywhere. I, I don't know. I got to close my eyes. Like, ah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. So yeah, super bullish. More value packed in the game. Uh, interesting with this healing aspect that you just brought up. I, I was kind of wondering myself what they're gonna do, and that makes sense. You know, elves are typically into the magic portion of uh, right the realm so yeah that makes sense and uh i i can foresee that being a super hot commodity that people are going to be seeing after because if you can however it works of putting them in a group if you can use that to keep your troops up hey that means yeah. you should be able to mine longer so yeah super utility with that one too yeah for sure like i was I was showing some of the footage last night on the stream on, uh, on on Twitch last night, and everyone was like, "Dude, that game looks amazing!" So uh, that's just and that's just what we're seeing right now. We're not even getting to play. So and that's with the dwarves and the and battling the orcs and stuff. So I can't wait to see what it's like when those elves get in and we have like a mixed team of dwarves and elves and mining and defending and healing and and land and and br it's gonna be insane, man. I, I like I love hearing these ideas coming out of your mind, especially now with like how you can gamble the Solonite and stuff man like i say again uh, like you say the sky's the limit and and you guys definitely have some really great minds on the project and you're always thinking you, you can always you can tell the wheels are always turning you guys are always looking at things ways to add ways to make things better which is already a, as as amazing as this already is you guys are already trying to make it better i talk about i talk about soulcraft all the time on the stream and stuff man i'm always big and I, I i'm so 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 bullish on this man because i just and again i didn't know about what the elves were doing i didn't know about this land stuff so there's even more 
uh, that I was just, I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. So yeah, so the female elves, um, and again, like I know uh, we've talked about this before, but just in if case, if you're, this is your first time in this video, if you're a first time viewer here, uh, these elves, so basically how it works is you have these dwarves, you can stake these dwarves right now before the game goes live, um, and with, and you're going to be farming Solonite. So with the Solonite, you're going to be able to buy these female elves, so you have to have dwarves uh, staked to get these, uh, these female elves, and they're going to be healers and stuff like that, which we just learned, which is absolutely interesting incredible okay so um awesome to hear man I'm, I'm really excited for the elves as well uh very 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 cool to hear did you want to add anything on that stinky duck wt on the elves i just wanted to say uh you know we are not 100 percent certain on on the exact utility right uh so that is subject to change uh, just a little disclaimer right um we just want to make sure that you know what we're trying to build is, uh, you know, a strategy base, like where you're going to have to have a strategy to get further and progress through the game. Like it, it shouldn't just be anybody can go on and do the same amount of rate mining or whatever, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to, to implement some type of strategy. Of course. So as we implement these other cl the classes, uh, it will add those other facets to the game that will make it more complex and more interesting and more challenging to play. Yeah, and, and one thing I got to say, I, I love how far Soulcraft is already ahead. Like, usually these games, you get the NFTs and the game is, like, way down the road. Yeah. You know, we have a game, like, just around the corner. The game is, is the alpha and stuff is around the corner. Everything's right there. We just had a mint, you know, a few weeks ago, whatever it was. Like, this is, it's ready, and that's what I love about it. So, I want you guys, I want you to tell us right now what separates, what sets Soulcraft apart from the rest. Why Soulcraft? I mean, I could tell you a million reasons, but... I want to hear from you. Why Soulcraft and like what sets it apart from everything else? Honestly, what sets us apart is just the massive building that they've already done and the drive of the of the actual team behind it and and just the love of it. You know what I mean? It, and I've never met somebody like Mal that's so just mm – -hmm. He's just so willing to give like perfect example. The, yesterday, uh, we have an art chat for the elves and we have the, the I was telling you about the, the women that we have from our community and they're all in there and we're discussing it. And we wanted to bring one more person in, but we were limited at 10 uh, because of discord. Right. So but he took himself out of the chat. So somebody from the community could come in and it's like, that's the kind of guy he is. You know what I mean? Like he's he's willing to sacrifice his own spot for a, a community member. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I and yeah. so. I think that's one of the big things, you know, you can tell the real people, you know, and that was one thing that I really drew, uh, drew me to Soulcraft. You know, I've seen hundreds, maybe if not thousands of projects that I've looked through, uh, that I've done either deep dives on that I've had calls with, uh, you know, the, the, the way that I go through games or, or collections is, is pretty stringent, but <laughs> This guy, like when I met him, I was so intrigued by the game, first of all. And then the more I heard, the more I just like, I just wanted to see him succeed. Like, I honestly, like, I'm like, man, like, I just want to help you. Like, I don't even care. Just show me what I can do to help you. Yeah. And he's like, help me work, man. He's like, we built this game. He's like, we, they had been building that game for a few months already when I met them. You know, now we're like, I don't know, seven months into the, they, I, I played the alpha for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, I, I when he came to me, though, they hadn't done any marketing, any networking. They didn't understand uh, the underground world of Solana. And, you know, that's where I came in. And, and it was helpful that I was able to, to show them, you know, my experiences and my, you know, what I've learned so far. Uh, so it, it was really kismet. And I think it was ultimately just, you know, one of those things that was meant to be. Um, but, yeah, I couldn't be more thrilled with the, the collection altogether. And I'm very passionate about the lore as well. Like Hobbit, yeah. my favorite book, um, Love. You know, Lord of the Rings. Love Lord of the Rings. Oh, man. I, have a, I, have a, I have a Legolas poster right here. You guys can't see it, but it's a giant six-foot poster on my wall. Uh, but I got I got to say, uh, I agree. Uh, Mal or Dwarf King, as a lot of you guys know him. The guy is so generous. The guy is so incredible. You, he's he's He loves this community more than anybody and like we love the community too but this guy is here for the community he loves it you can tell he doesn't sleep he's always putting in the work he's always putting people ahead of him uh i gotta give a big shout out right there a hundred percent uh a great guy like a really 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 great guy and you can tell he cares about about everybody in the in the collection as well so big 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 shout out to dwarf king as you guys know him or mal some of you guys might know him 
uh absolutely incredible but yeah i agree i think soulcraft with the lore with the with the gameplay with just even the style of game that it is uh the utility there's just there's so many reasons to say why soulcraft i mean there's there's so many reasons that just pick one you could throw a dart at a board and it's just like yep that's the one you know it's just there's so many reasons um and uh, wt tell me what tell us something about soulcraft what why soulcraft give us a a, a why soulcraft uh well obviously the value that's that's the captain obvious one uh but what 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 stinky duck was just saying it just it resonates uh with what i was saying earlier he's talking about finding someone that he believes is a good person and he, through his actions he's come to that conclusion and he's willing to contribute to what he's doing and we in our own personal projects outside of soulcraft we're seeing that like i know you bruno and myself we've had people coming up hey I want to get involved with what you guys are doing and I want to like help out. And that's what, what Stingy just said about this being like an underground. It is, it's mm -hmm. an organic grassroots underground. And that's what happens when it's just real people, real good people getting together and trying to collab and do building good things. And you're not going to get that with the big corporation. So exactly. I absolutely love it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, uh, yeah. Absolutely incredible, dude. I, I, whenever I hear the name Stinky Duck, it just makes me chuckle a little bit. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, um, okay. One of the, okay. So, uh, one of the posts in the Discord, uh, you reference why some huge NFT uh, collections have massively large floors uh, and uh, did so by holding their assets to uh, dictate like the price, right? Uh, so far, Soulcraft has about 90% staking. So 90% of the, of the dwarves are being staked, which is unbelievable yep uh and uh do you see uh incentives coming to keep uh that holding atmosphere like do you keep incentives to to, to keep people from holding and staking or whatever it is holding the the dwarves uh or do you think the game itself will kind of promote that and make it happen well i think obviously you know the game is going to be a big factor you know what in any an nft collection that has a game as soon as the game comes out you know as long as it's not you know a terrible game then usually you see a reflection in the value of that <laughs> nft now that said um i think that there's so much more that we actually have to bring to this uh to our community because periodically as you guys know i'll drop in and just all of a sudden say okay whoever does this first is getting you know 100 solonite or know. you know whoever you know what i mean like that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be doing on a constant regular basis and and we enjoy doing it um you know be, before I was even a team member on uh, Soulcraft. Like I was donating some dwarfs just for giveaways because I, I wanted to see the community engagement. I wanted to see mm. people excited about it and uh, it just drives us. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. I think that there's gonna be so much more. You guys, when we talk about stuff, we're only talking about the tip of the iceberg. Just right. let's just put it that way. No, I see it. I believe it too. I believe it too. I mean, I see, I see what, and like you said, with the giveaways and stuff, the, the, you guys have been so generous. I mean, you expect, I always see you doing things like that. It's, it's mm -hmm. incredible to see. And that's, it helps build a community and, and you guys are doing a fantastic job um, at that, like absolutely a fantastic job at that. So yeah, I see, like, like we said, there's 90% or 90 something percent of the dwarves that are staked, which is just unbelievable. Um, you know, it's it's been it's been it's blowing my mind everything all the stats you read you see all the stats have been blowing my mind uh for sure uh wt have any questions uh no nah, i well yeah i've got tons of just i've i've been so focused on what he's saying so i know like, i'm not even thinking about asking him stuff so this, this has been awesome man but uh yeah, you're a very good speaker, man. I I can listen to you all day. I could do this all day with you, man. I mean, you're a very, very good speaker, very good at explaining it. Uh, you're breaking it down. You're you're filling us with very, very, very good information. And uh, I really appreciate it, man. You're being very, yeah, very good speaker. Well, one thing, uh, so we were talking about the staking of the doors being so high. Once the once the game gets actually going and that staking period is over, is is there going to be in-game mechanics for those dwarves with the certain armors that are good for staking or, or is that going to be pretty much done and over with so we have talked about this a few times and you know my biggest thing is i want to be able to incentivize people for holding because i mean you and i you guys know i know i'm too busy to be playing you know games to be mining on a constant regular basis it's just right. i just don't time. Mm -hmm. I, I wish i could but i don't um 
So I want to implement a way to earn Solonite passively with your dwarves, uh, but also to make it incentivized where you play the game and you're going to earn it at a faster rate. You know, obviously right. somebody that's there interacting and playing the game should should have a benefit to that. So we've talked about uh, renting out your dwarves is one uh, one of the options that that we can implement almost right away. Um, Whereas, you know, somebody wants to test this out, they can come in, they can try a dwarf out, it's very reasonable. Or even if it's, you know, if it's a percentage of what that person that's borrowing your dwarf is gathering, you know, as payment. You know, there's lots of different ways that we can do this, especially with Solonite being, you know, it's going to be on a DEX. It's going to have a liquidity pool. We're looking for private investors. It's it, it's going to be, uh, you know, very it's going to be our 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 blood that pumps the whole ecosystem you know what i mean so mm. we're taking extra precautions and care to make sure that it's developed property properly that's why we're working with a econ economist and and we're we're talking with other collections that have done it successfully i'm talking to communities that have done it not successfully too because i want to right. know where did you what happened why you know where where was the drawback and what was the benefits and what was you know i want to understand it all completely and so it is helpful that I was in crypto well before I got in NFTs mm -hmm. because I understand the token quite well. Right. Um, but I mean, I'm no expert, so I, I'm relying on the experts for this. And, uh, you know, we're putting our minds together so that we can come up with something that's sustainable and not just two years, five years. We're talking, you know, 25 years. Right. We, and I, we want the longevity. I love that. And I love, I love the fact, I love the fact that you said you even talk to people that fail because people underestimate <clears throat> the importance of that. Okay. <clears throat> you talk to someone that failed and you said, okay, where did it go wrong? Why did it fail? You talk to, you always, you never hear the fail stories. You always hear the winning stories. Oh yeah, we're on the top. You never hear what went wrong with those other companies. And if you learn from other people, and I'm a big believer of this, if you learn from other people's mistakes, uh, you know, obviously you got to go through your own paths too, but if you learn from other people's mistakes, it can help prevent you from making the same mistakes and i love that i love that so the fact you're like yeah we talk about projects that have made it we've also talked about products that haven't made it and where did it go wrong where would you have changed it where did you see that fork in the road where it was like everything is good all of a sudden it's you know okay oh we made a mistake and now it went this way dude that's great that is great to hear because you're looking at all angles not just the ones that made it what worked for them you got to look at all the different angles what didn't work and implement that into the game i think that's amazing man so i, I, I like that you said that that's very very uh very smart on that for sure um so we talked about land um how is so there's only 800 plots of land i want to get back to the land real quick here there's only 800 plots of land um you have to have three dwarves in order to for every three dwarves you get one i gotta get more i gotta get more dwarves now. every time i talk to every time i talk i always gotta get dude this is it's it's a, it's <laughs> it's literally like dude it's all right i gotta get more now man i gotta get another plot i gotta look Eden, dude, dude, I can't. <laughs> if I go there and look, I'm buying something. So I've stopped myself from looking. That's how bad it's, it is. I'm just, I, I can't go there. I, I got go there. I need more dwarves. I, uh, what am I going to say? <laughs> so, anyway, so three dwarves. I'm a holder too, as you guys know. Like, I, I hold a ton of them, and, and, uh, it's because I believe in them. You yeah. Know? I, I, I bought every single one of them. You know, I, I didn't get any gifted to me or anything. So that's, right. what, that's how I believe in it. Yeah, no, for sure. So, so I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be looking at the market right after we, we're done recording here. Maybe pick up a couple more. We'll see what happens, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah, like I say, uh, with, with the plot of land, there's only 800, which I, which is huge. We learned about the wheat today, which is huge buildings. I didn't even know about buildings. Like I, for honestly, what I, when I thought of the lands, I thought it was like, you know, there's the, the common to mythic, uh, forest to lava or volcano, whatever it was called, volcanic, volcanic. And you can mine like certain yep. amount depending on, on there's like an abundance depending on the, the rarity and stuff like that, which I thought was amazing as it was. Now we're learning about the buildings. Now we're learning about the wheat, uh, weapon shops, whatever you were saying. I need more land now. Like, uh, <laughs> here we are. So I need more land. And, you know, that's just the way it is. Hey, man, there's a reason I've been saying right from the beginning, I'm going to be a whale, uh, like a, a land whale. That's That was my whole intention. Right. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's why I've acquired so many. And that's why, you know, it's, I, I think that they're going to do so well. I mean, the uh, the land integration, uh, uh, the dashboard that you're going to have, you're going to be able to control your land taxes and everything, as you guys probably know. Nice. Um, you know, there, there's going to be a whole uh, setup for that so that it's very easily uh, – because you're not going to be able to go into the game and have to manage it, right? You know, you got, you got to be able to access it from a dashboard right. uh, from a management point of view. And so that's what we're looking at. And do you guys know about the uh, – you can hide NFTs on your land? Yeah, I, I did. I read that. Yeah. So you can literally have, I don't know, I, I, I could maybe like a dwarf or something or like a weapon. Or, I don't know what, but it's, you can hide it. And if they mine it, say it again, sorry. 
So you can have anything. So, um, for example, uh, Exiled Apes. You're familiar with the collection of the Exiled Apes? So they're partnered with us. Uh, they're going to get a custom land parcel. So anybody who owns a land parcel can host an event on their own land. And so in order to entice people, or even if it's not an event and you just want to have more people coming to mine, mm -hmm. you can say, oh, and by the way, I've hidden a galactic gecko on my land or, a, a, you know, whatever. It, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is. You can hide as many or as little NFTs on that land as you want, and it will randomly spawn uh, for somebody that's mining on that land. Wow. And so it's a way to incentivize uh, people to come to your land. Wow, that's amazing. So you well, can you talking, oh, go, go ahead. ahead? No, no, go ahead, WT. Go ahead, buddy. No, so you're talking about events, and so I've seen in Discord you guys do a ton of events, which has been awesome to build the community. Once this game gets going, is that kind of the events that you're gonna maybe curtail towards in game, or do you guys have some different plans for events? Or maybe maybe you don't. I don't know. What's what's it gonna be like going down the road in the game with events for you guys? Do you think? Yeah, so uh, so we're definitely going to have our own events, for sure. Um, what we want to try to do is show people uh, what you can do with your land, you know, because it's not just about, you know, a, a passive income that it's generating, but you can also do, you, you, uh, we want to show the different utilities of the land parcels as well. So we're going to lead by example, and we're going to show mm -hmm. people what you can do with them, um, you know. I don't know if I can talk about it. I, I'm going to anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, oh, uh oh, <laughs> everyone play, everyone close your, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't get me any trouble, but I've been talking with chill chats and we want to get them a custom land piece and, and they, they're they very interested with that. So, you know, with, with them, they're going to be able to ha host uh, an event on their own uh, land parcel to have their own community come in there, but we're going to have cross pollination too, because they're going to have, you know, maybe a big sign on their land that, designates you know or we'll have a parlay land uh we've got uh network dow you know there's a couple others that we have you know these custom land parcels to these guys are going to be able to uh to cross pollinate with all these other communities through dwarfs that's you know amazing I mean? that's amazing so you're even yeah. saying like because they can put nfts on their land uh as well right so or whatever it is like they're gonna be nfts on the land so that it's like i say cross pollinating i like the way you worded that cross pollinating uh that is really cool so you're gonna have like certain lands like dedicated for like certain people or certain teams or whatever it is, is that what you're saying yeah picture this okay so you guys are familiar with the uh the land menu for uh uh uh, little icons or pictures or whatever they are, right? The little land bubbles that mm -hmm. go around. Uh, we showed it in one of our AMAs. And so basically you can scroll through to which land style you want to go to. But once we have the land parcels implemented on those individual maps, you'll see the different nodes and those nodes will designate and actually they'll represent actual land parcels. So you'll have the parlay land parcel that you can see and you can go to if you want Got to. Got it. And so you take a little dwarf to the parlay land parcel and you're mining away or whatever. And, and it's just, that's what I mean by cross-pollination because you're going to have all these other communities that are coming into to see your land, but they can also see other people's lands, go there, mine, you know, check out their events. It, it'll be a whole ecosystem is what we aim for. Amazing. Now, what's the max amount of people you can have on your land? Is there a maximum number? Yeah, and I should know this. And it's that was 10, <laughs> isn't it? It's 10. Right? Um, or am I thinking I of think, the dwarves? I think 10 is uh, the max for in your party. Um, you know what? I, I'm not going to answer it because I, I can't recall. <laughs> and no, just, but yeah. no sweat. We'll find out soon anyway. It's no sweat. It's no sweat. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's incredible, man. And again, like we said, the the, the more rare, the more more abundance of Solonite that's on there. Dude, I love it. Now, is it that man? Uh, absolutely amazing. I love how you say that. I love how we're, there's going to be the menus and how you can cross pollinate. I love that word. Uh, dude, that is absolutely amazing. Now, I have a really, really important question. Actually, WT, you can ask this question. This is this was WT's question. Uh, WT, you have a very important question about um, the five. You have a certain question uh, you wanted to ask him. Uh, he, 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 he already told me he's not going to tell, but I'm going to ask anyway. Why won't, <laughs> why won't you tell us about this five layer dip? You're pro putting up on your profile. Everybody's like, oh, what is that? And it's like you're flaunting something, but then, like, no, nah, I'm not telling. Ha ha. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, we go to a party together. I'll bring it. And you, you don't go. know why. <laughs> you're, uh, you're Canadian, right? Yeah. 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 You're, you're I know I know the area dude, I'm actually gonna be there in May. I'm gonna be around your area. Maybe I will see this dip in May. I don't know. We'll see. I'll be there uh I'm doing an event out in out in your area. So uh and we'll see. I, 
I go to I go to that I go there all the time, man, for events and stuff. We do things over there all the time, so I'll be uh, we'll definitely have, have a beer sometime for for sure, for sure. Man, um, all the cool people are in Canada, Australia, <laughs> France, and Ukraine. Us USA people, man, we suck at the moment in this space. So that, let me tell you, there's nobody near me right now. I tell you, like in in on I'll just say Ontario because I don't want to like you know I don't want to uh, give away your area, but like in 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 our in Ontario. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, especially where you are. There's tons of people in the space. It's crazy. It's it's uh, it's so big. Yeah. Um, any last? Uh, 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 let's put it here. Any last things you want to bring up before we uh, show? Anything that we missed? Anything you want to bring up, Stinky Duck? Anything you want to tell the community? Anything you want to tell the investors, future investors, people that are just hearing this for the first time? Uh, here's your chance. Tell them what you want them to know. Uh, take the floor, my man. You know what? In this space, find the projects. Find the founders that are building, the ones that are that are working at it day in and day out. And when their floor price drops, they're still working at it. And you can see them. And as you stay in this space longer, you'll start to recognize them sooner and sooner and easier and easier and stay with them and connect with them and, and network with them and get involved. If you want to make a living in this space, all you got to do is just get involved. And you don't right. have to get paid to do it. You know, that's how everybody starts in this space. Right. Get involved and you just work at it and you, you contribute where you can. And everybody has skills that they can contribute. And if you do that, you will not believe the response because this is not the same as a community in Web 2. It's it's just exactly. not. You know, yeah. Web 3 gives us the ability to connect and to network and to be a part of something as an owner, as a part owner of whatever you invest in. Yeah. And so find those projects and have some fucking conviction. I agree. And, and, and that's the thing. Like you look at like even Twitter, like, you know, you see the communities building and, and, you know, we always, I post up my dwarves or whatever, some information you see the communities building around it. Like, yeah, we're a part of this. Then the profile pictures is a huge thing now and stuff. I love that. And you're right, man. It's uh we got to We, yeah, the community is, is uh, we got to build that for sure. Uh, WT, what about you, man? Anything you want to say? Yeah. Just one quick, quick thing. The team has been very transparent about this. Uh, Anybody in the space should know by now there's going to be bumps and bruises. We we hype things up. We get excited about things, but there's going to be challenges. So let's not forget that. And the team has very been very transparent about this is not a finished product when it comes out. Be excited about it, but let's have some, you know, realistic expectations that it does take time for things to grow. But uh, it looks like some great things are coming. And I, I appreciate you coming on and all the stuff you shared today. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that that information. Guys. No, that information. Like the, it, you know, just having to sit down. You're you're great. This is a great chat. I'd love to sit down with you anytime. Pick your brain and stuff. I mean, you're a very very knowledgeable guy. Very intelligent guy. Uh, very good information. And uh, and like we say, we 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 love this pro. We love 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 this project. Um, there's no doubt about that. So we're definitely uh, we're here for it, man. And I and I can't wait to see this grow. And if you guys have been sleeping on it, anybody that's been sleeping on this project, if you've watched this video and you're still not convinced, I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, there's just so much utility. Uh, we have a bunch of videos on this. You can check them all out. You're gonna learn so much about what what where this project is, where it's going, where it's aiming for. Uh, and we're still learning every day like you know we're still learning like we said we learned about the the land today we're still learning about stuff and uh i'm sure they have a ton more sleeves or tricks up their sleeve that we don't even know mm -hmm. uh you know things are going to evolve things are going to grow and uh and and my my advice is uh don't sleep on this man i wouldn't I, I wouldn't sleep on this i'm not sleeping on it and uh definitely check it out take a look and i'll, I'll put some links below of their discord and and you know uh, magic e we'll put all the li uh, the links up their site uh check it out for yourself do your own research uh uh, but I would say uh, this is definitely something I would not sleep on for sure. Um, any last words? You guys are good. I want to say thank you so much. Uh, stinky. I love the name. Uh, thank you so much, man, for coming on here and chatting and breaking it down to us. WT, man, it's, you know, the legend right here. I tell you, one day he's just going to start floating in the chair. He's going to grow wings off of that, that caterpillar on his lip. Uh, you know, it's going to evolve into a butterfly. Uh, I love it, man. I love it. It looks good. It looks really good. So, um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for, for doing this. And, uh, I mean, I'm so bullish on this project. Thank you so much for coming on, chatting with us. Uh, I actually want to give a couple of shout outs before, before we end here, man. Uh, Jay Bizzle, huge shout out. A lot of the, a lot of the Soulcraft community. I want to give massive shout outs, man. Uh, Jay Bizzle, Sanjuro, solemnly swear. Uh, there's a million of you guys I want to talk about, man. If there's anybody who wants to say what's up, obviously Dwarf King, you're a beauty. There's so many of you. Uh, thank you for everything you do. This is what builds the community. You guys build the community. And uh, dude, I can't wait. I can't wait to see the future. So thank you again. We're out of here. I love you guys.
We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Peace. Take care.